Hey y'all, I'm back on the back deck since things have warmed up and dried off and everything like that. Um, it's a beautiful day today. I encourage everybody to go outside. So we've been talking about um, the resurrection and the resurrection as the central event for Christianity. That if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then we would, um, the church would not exist the New Testament would not exist, that his followers, had Jesus just died and been buried and never come back, his followers just would have scattered and maybe found another leader uh, or just gone back to their regular day jobs. But Jesus did rise from the dead and completely flipped the world upside down. Our world looks completely different in ways that we can't even fathom because Jesus rose from the dead. And so we're talking about all of the things that it means for Jesus of resurrection. What does it mean for us that Jesus is alive now? Um, and one of the things that I wanted to talk about is our spirituality, our spiritual life. This is what John 3.36 says. It says, whoever ha believes in the Son of God has eternal life. You know, we often think about what Jesus' resurrection means for us, and it means that one day after I die, it means that I will live eternally, that I will have eternal life in the future, in heaven, with Him. And that is absolutely true. However, that's not what this passage says. This passage says that whoever believes in Jesus has eternal life now, in this moment, not in some future sense, but now in this life. What could that possibly mean? What is, what is Jesus referring to in this passage? And thankfully, we get some clarity uh, for that later on in the book of John. At the end of the book of John, in John chapter 17, Jesus prays his last prayer to the Father before he is arrested and beaten and tried and executed. Jesus invites us, allows us in writing to hear and participate in his last prayer to the Father. It's an amazing thing. And so I think it, we should listen to it very closely. And this is how it begins. It says in John 17, Father, the hour has come, meaning it is time for Jesus' death. It is time for him to be arrested, for him to give his life for us. The Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh. For what purpose? Why did the Father give the Son authority over all flesh? Well, he says this. To give him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. That parallels that John 3 statement that whoever believes in the Son has now eternal life. That whoever belongs to Jesus, whoever has been given to him by the Father, he is going to give to them eternal life. And then he defines it in verse 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That we would know God. You know, it's very easy for us to confuse knowledge about God with knowing God. You can know about God and never truly know Him. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, the scribes, all of the leaders, the religious leaders of Israel in Jesus' day, they knew a lot about God. But they didn't know God because he was standing in the flesh, looking them in the face, and they couldn't see it because all they had was facts. What Jesus says is that we can know God experientially, relationally, that our eternal life is going to be and it is, is an invitation to enter into the fellowship of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that has existed from eternity past, that we, by God's grace and mercy, are invited to enter into that and be participants of that amazing reality 
And Jesus says in this passage that we can experience that even now. That is an incredible statement. That is a mind-blowing statement. How can we know that that is true? We know that that is true because when Jesus rose from the dead, the first fruits, the down payment, the, the sign that God is going to fulfill his promise has broken through. Eternal life has broken through into our world in Jesus' resurrection. And because he lived for us, he died for us, and he rose for us, we can know God now in this life and begin the celebration of eternity in our day-to-day -day lives today.